Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease, and I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute as medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Hello, friends. Thank you for being there with me last week as I geeked out on skin. But I am just so happy to talk about it as I learn more, as I grow, develop, and gain more knowledge. I really want to share that with you. And I'll be honest, when I initially started learning about skin, I was angry. Not from the perspective of, oh my gosh, why do I have to learn all this? But I didn't really have anyone talking to me about the importance of taking care of your skin or why it's so important. And even looking at it from a food perspective, people say drink water, eat vegetables and all that fun stuff. But I was always that kid that asked why, 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 and this is how my parents started giving me lots of books because they were too nice to say they were tired of me asking questions. So they encouraged me to do a lot of self-exploration, which I did. Now, this week we're going to talk a lot about vegetable and herbal oils, but we're going to start at the basis of vegetable oils. And then in the next episode for next week's podcast as we enter into thyroid awareness month I want to give you some practical ways of simply taking care of your skin and health and that actually leads me into an announcement so we are having fun next month January is thyroid awareness month and we are going to be celebrating so what I want you to do if you're driving don't do this but Get out a pen and paper, and I want you to write down joyfulebony.com forward slash thyroid awareness month. And that is where you can go to get all the details about all of the festivities and fun happening next week from a virtual 5K to just talking about advocacy and thyroid health. But also, we're going to be doing a virtual sip and paint. We are going to be hearing from other folks that have had thyroid conditions so that you can hear from other people that I know and trust as it relates to talking about that. And also, I want to make sure that we are incorporating this. So we're going to do a make and take body scrub and body oil class as well as a thyroid friendly cooking class. And some of the proceeds from everything happening this month will be donated to autoimmune.org. And that is an organization, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that I interviewed the former CEO, Virginia Ladd. So she was such a wonderful woman. She herself struggled with lupus, another autoimmune condition. And I went to their website very early on to learn about Hashimoto's disease when I was initially diagnosed. And I believe that they are doing some amazing things. So I want to make sure that I am contributing to that organization. You can also go to autoimmune.org and donate to them directly. But 10 out of 10, highly recommend them. So for now, let's go ahead and start talking about vegetable and herbal oils. So again, getting into the science a little bit. And one thing that was really interesting to me as I was doing a lot of research is when we think about vegetable oil, we think about them as oils. And I know you're probably thinking, well, duh, like, hello, oil. But we don't often think about how we actually get or obtain or process these oils. And many of them come from plants, but they may come from the leaf, they may come from the actual nut of the plant. It really just depends, or the seed, it it just depends. So 
the key about these things is that yes, we can use them in lotions, gels, facial oils, body oils, cells, ointments, butters, lip balms, all those things. But at the core, they have a lot of fat soluble vitamins. And we're talking vitamin A, E, D, K, and let's not even get into the fatty acids and all of the good things that make up vegetable oils. And from a skin perspective, they really and truly do help our skin and to prevent that transepidermal water loss and to really and truly provide that protective barrier and seal in all the goodness that we put on our skin and protect us. So one thing, because as you know, I have Sula Beauty Co. and I make soaps. So there are basically two categories when we think about vegetable oils and if you've ever heard from a soap maker before, besides myself, you may have heard of saponifiable lipids. And then there are non-saponifiable li- lipids. So you're probably like, Ebony, I don't know what that means. Break it down for me. Sure. So when you think of the word saponifiable It's basically a part of a lipid. Yes, we're going back to high school biology when we have our lipid barrier and we have our little tails and all that fun stuff. But that portion or that's the part of a quote unquote lipid that has what are called esters. And when we think about that term, it's basically a process where we take the well, we have like the triglycerides, we're talking about cholesterol, basically. And the triglycerides react with your either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide if you're making liquid soap. And it basically creates glycerol. And basically, fatty acid, salt like stuff, but it's making soap. So It's basically a breaking apart of that fatty acid in order to make us that wonderful soap from my perspective that I actually make that feels really nice on my skin. And then when we think about that, it it also has a, it separates basically And we have all of these other things that are basically floating around from waxes to other types of liquids. I won't go into detail about that, but what we really need to focus on is vegetable oils are the ish, okay? And again, thank you for joining me as I nerded out there. I'm not going to go back into chemistry anymore. But essentially what we want to think about when we say we're pulling out esters, you know what that is. And I'm sure you're like, I do? Yes. If you have ever used jojoba oil, for example, that contains wax esters. It is a, a substance that is very similar to our skin in terms of its chemical structure and makeup. And that is actually what I put in my facial oils for that very reason. And when we look at how those vegetable oils are composed, we have our sterols and they really and truly mimic or not mimic, they're, they're like cholesterol basically. And cholesterol is found in our skin oil. And it's very, very important in terms of creating that structure that protects our skin. And we also get what are called hydrocarbons, because remember I said when that process happens with the whole saponification, it breaks it down into other things. The other things are substances like hydrocarbons. And you may be thinking, Girl, just just tell me what all this stuff means, okay? All right, no problem. 
So when we think about that, we're with a hydrocarbon, that's squalene. So anytime you hear or you read on a package, oh, this contains squalene oil, mm, so good for you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's great, actually. And the, the reason why it's so good for us is it's basically protecting our skin from UV radiation, essentially. And you've heard about tocopherols. That's vitamin E. And what's really great about that is it's a good antioxidant. So it's always reducing the breakdown of our, cell, our skin at the cellular level. When we also look at a lot of other, for example, phospholipids, those are, they're an emulsifier or something that, that really just helps your skin, or not your skin, but the vegetable oil remain stable. So we always want to think about that whenever we are making any kind of massage oil or we're purchasing these types of products because we always want to make sure that our oils don't go rancid. And that's why so much of the chemical structure of oils is important. And that is why on your, your oil products that you may use for your skin, that's why you may see vitamin E in it. That's why you may see a particular plant extract. A quick note about plant extracts. Sometimes, especially if you have sensitive skin, you want to be very cautious about extracts. And I have been learning this as I've been creating products because naturally extracts need to be preserved somehow. And a lot of times they're preserved in an alcohol, but the supplier doesn't always tell you that. And you have to search to figure out, okay, well, what is this preserved in? Because I'm having a reaction to it. What is it? So you, you just want to be mindful when you see a lot of marketing ploys for various extracts and all that stuff. A lot of times that's less than 1% in a formulation. And you also have to be conscious when you see a certain extract as the quote unquote star product, because again, it's marketing and it's probably a tenth of a drop. Okay. It, it's not that much. Save your money, please. That is why you have your friendly aromatherapist and formulator here to answer your questions if you get confused about these things. Obviously, if you're having skin problems, talk to a dermatologist. But y'all, I am learning so much and I am not going to let anyone take advantage of you. Okay, protective mode over. Now, why am I, why am I telling you this? Well, remember... Last week, when we were talking about the various layers of the skin, what the, the top layer I talked about was the stratum corneum. And I talked about ceramides and CeraVe and all these different types of products that people are really talking about today. And again, the ceramides that are put in that product mimic the ceramides in your skin. And when you use vegetable oils, you also have things like cholesterol and fatty acids within your cells, and that is working together. That meaning the vegetable oils are working together synergistically with your body to do some amazing things to keep your skin great. Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. But here's another thing that you also want to consider is that we are always working to support the health of that stratum corneum, that top layer of skin. Even though things have basically start from the inside out, that outer layer is such an important protector of our bodies. And we want to make sure that we're supporting our skin so that we can have that healthy, supple and glowing skin. And 
this is this is when I definitely try very hard to get to know the products that I'm using, the suppliers that I'm using when I'm creating products for Sula Beauty Co. Because that matters. And we all know that depending on what the product is and, you know, organic claims versus natural versus this versus that, it's it's a lot to kind of sift through. And I'm learning the importance of really and truly knowing where your product and ingredients for things comes from. So for me, as a general consumer, I try very hard to buy organic whenever possible. And if not, no big deal. But I'm getting to know the companies that I buy things from. And I follow them on social media and there's someone that's managing those social media accounts and I'll ask questions about something or I'll go to their website and send them an email and have a general question that I expect them to answer. Or I go to their FAQs and there have been times where I've asked, how did you source this? Where did you get this from? Where did you grow this? What kind of soil was it grown in? Now, obviously, again, you don't have time to do all that. And that's why I do the work for you. But it is very interesting to see the process of extracting plant matter for oils. So all of these things, the vitamins, the minerals, and everything under the sun related to vegetable oils and why they're so important is another reason why from a thyroid perspective... We have to take very good care of our skin and support it from the inside out and the outside in. Because as I have learned all of these things and as I've been implementing the use of various products and substances, I am noticing a difference in my skin. And it's really and truly magical, honestly, because I, I did not realize the power of plants. You hear that all the time and you're like, yeah, whatever. But they really, they really are cool. Like, seriously, they're cool. Now, the other thing, and I'm going to give you an example from an herbal oil perspective. That is simply the process of utilizing some whole plant or herb in many cases and you basically combine it with another type of oil. So I'll give you the example of calendula oil, and that'll be my only example for today, and then we'll close. So you know this plant. It's marigold. And it can be placed in a carrier oil or vegetable oil. And it's really cool to do this at home. And I often will do this by getting dried flowers and you want to make sure they're bright in color that they have a really fragrant smell to them i like to go to mountainroseherbs.com or frontier i believe it is frontier botanicals to get a lot of my dried herbs and they're wonderful they're fragrant they're bright orange and yellow and i just enjoy that process of just taking in the aroma and basically what I do is I take those dry flowers put them in olive oil close the lid on the jar and let them sit I turn them upside down and this is really if you just have time to spare put them on the windowsill you're done every couple of days invert the jar shake it a little bit and let it go if you're not that patient If you have a dehydrator that is large enough, you can also do this process in the dehydrator. And honestly, I have done that several times to make things for myself. And anytime you go into a grocery store, normally, usually in like the cosmetics aisle, you'll also start to see more herbal oils. So you'll see your calendulas, you'll see carrot oil, you'll see rose hip. And I absolutely positively love 
rosehip oil. Just saying, it smells delicious. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. But the plants themselves have so many therapeutic properties that it, it, it's just fun. So I highly encourage you, go out, go to some of these websites, type in dry herbs. Be careful if you order them off of mass websites, for example, whose name I will not mention here. But you just want to be careful of where you're getting these things from. And I, like I said, definitely enjoy herbal oils and vegetable oils. I make all of my products with them. I know the suppliers and de I'm developing relationships with them. So it's just really nice to be able to bring that to you. And I've been talking about my products, my products, my products. You can go to Sula Beauty Co. S-O-U-L-A beautyco.com if you would like to take a look around but for now that is what I'm going to leave you with so again go to joyfulebony.com forward slash thyroid awareness month so that you can see the full gamut of activities that are happening next month for thyroid awareness month and if you made it this far through the podcast episode this week Tomorrow is the last day that my services will be at the current price as of January 1st. They are increasing. So you can go to joyfulebony.com forward slash services to fill out the questionnaire. And I can also send you my brochure if you want to work one on one. Otherwise, continue to join me as we talk about all of the fun things about living a happy, healthy and joy filled life. And with that, Take care. Okay, Thyroid Warriors, get out there and take things one step at a time. Remember, reflect on your triumphs, know that you are doing your best, and do what you need to do in order to be well. I would absolutely love it if you subscribe to this podcast and share this episode with a friend. And don't forget, leave me a review. I read those and try very hard to improve the show based upon your feedback. So I'd love to hear from you. And with that, be happy, be whole, and be well. Take care.